Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to SuTube. It is September the 8th, and today I'm going to be taking a look, of course, at my macro outlook on Bitcoin, followed by a little shorter term time frames, and then hopping into Ethereum a little bit, taking a look over there too. If you guys think that sounds good, then give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and let's hop right into it. <laughs> All right, guys, looking at my Bitstamp weekly Bitcoin chart here, I have both good and bad news. Uh, the good news is we're still right on par for testing my triangle, where I thought that we might get a bit of a bounce and then start our bull market from here. And I've been pointing that out for quite a while that I have been expecting this retest. Uh, one thing though to consider is if I pull up this Fibonacci tool from where our COVID dump ended to where we topped out in this red box here, the 0 0.382 Fib line is down closer to 9200 on this chart. And that's obviously still quite a ways down. The good news is we do have all this trading action down here. That was months of boring trading action. Um, and another thing to consider is this could actually be acting as support now. Um, that we'll have to take a look at a smaller time frame to hop into that. But just looking at this now, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't at least test the 382 from where we've uh, kind of started this rally to the upside to where we finished. Um, it's very often, even in a very strong bullish trend, you will eventually get a pullback and you will test this 382 level. If it's a very bullish trend, uh, if that hold, that may hold as support. And if it does from there, that's when we might start uh, breaking to new higher highs and then consolidating, probably dropping to a 382 line or a 618 line or something like that in the process and uh, continuing rallies from there. But as of right now, um, since we haven't quite tested my white line, I know this. there's a little bit of leeway because this is a weekly chart. It's hard to be pinpoint accurate, but I am expecting to at least get a wick to touch my white triangle. And it would make perfect sense to me if we would test that right at the 382 level. Obviously, this doesn't have to happen. But if that were to happen, it would be uh, happening around the end of September. So it would be really funny if it worked out very perfectly like that. Of course, usually in trading, nothing ends up working out perfectly. But uh, we just kind of use technical analysis to kind of improve our odds on making trades. Right, guys? So that's just something to watch. That's an important level, in my opinion. Um, another thing is a lot of people are just assuming that we are going to fill the $9,600 CME futures gap, but a lot of people will think that the bull market is going to start right at that point. And although that could absolutely happen, guys, um, a lot of times what happens is the unexpected will happen. So if everybody is super bullish around that level, just like they were around the 10.5,000 range, including myself, um, Obviously, we just got pushed right past that because that's what the market makers wanted. They want to trick everybody and take their money or their Bitcoin, whatever. So that's just something to kind of watch out for why I think we might be heading down towards the $9,200 level. Um, but with that, let's hop over to the four hour chart. Actually, before I switch the charts here, um, another thing I want to point out is check out this RSI. I have these red trend lines forming a bit of a triangle in the RSI. And although we had this breakout of my big weekly white triangle here, we never did get an RSI resistance break with it. So I'm starting to wonder, you'll notice that I never had this white line in previous videos. I just added this now where uh, we topped out at 14,000 to where we just topped out at about 12.4, 12.5 thousand, wherever that was. Um, I'm wondering if that might be the line that ends up respecting this RSI resistance line as well. So if we happen to kind of coil up in this zone here and get our break of this white line at the same time that we're coiling up in here, break above our RSI and get way overbought conditions, um, that might be where we see a true ridiculous 
parabolic move to the upside. And of course, guys, none of this has to happen and none of this is financial advice. Always do your own research. I am not a financial advisor. I'm by no means a professional. Just showing you things that I'm looking at from a technical perspective, in my opinion, and how I'm trying to play this market here. So uh, with that, I am going to hop over to the four hour chart. Um, this is probably a new pattern that you guys haven't really seen pointed out because this ridiculous wick on a, I'll sh dive right into a 15 minute here in a little bit to show you that ridiculous wick that happened here. Anybody who, I don't know if you guys watch smaller time frames or not, but there was quite a candle there. And to me, I already had this uh, support line down here, the green support line of this channel. I had that as a support line and now that we got this wick I thought that it looked kind of like a parallel channel and sure enough it matches up perfectly. So one thing I'm watching right now although we did get this whole cluster of support here in this yellow box inside this pattern um, if we do drop this yellow box I would assume that we would test the bottom of this once again, and that's where we may end up seeing that 9600 level. Uh, if that were to happen, I could see it happening even tonight. And that would match up perfectly with the bottom for a retest of the support of this uh, falling channel here. So just something to watch. I don't, it doesn't have a whole bunch of touch points yet or anything. I don't know if I'd even consider it valid, but it's worth watching anyways, because sometimes those patterns form and uh, obviously it's better to be prepared than not prepared. Uh, if I zoom right into the 15 minute like I was talking about, you can see here that, uh, well, we got quite the pump and dump, but this doesn't look overly scary to me. Um, one thing to consider is, yes, although we got this massive fake out wick on top and then dropped right back down, we still got a pretty meaty, um, candle body there and it stayed green. I thought that if it ended up being a bearish hammer where we just had a small red candle or something like that, I thought we might end up dumping really soon. But even the fact, if we go from, this is a very micro swing guys, but if I go from the bottom of this red wick here where we bottomed out, pull the Fibonacci tool to the top of that ridiculous wick, we are currently staying above the 618 Fib line. And of course, this isn't overly significant yet because it's such a short time frame and this isn't even a pattern. This is just a very quick up and down kind of a thing. But that is an interesting level that we're holding there on a very small time frame there. So there is still a little bit of juice in the tank, I'm thinking. Um, we're going to have to see how it plays out. We're going to have to see if we can break to the upside of this channel. If we do, I think Bitcoin could be in for a bit of a rally here. But again, I don't know if we're going to quite get away with not filling that $9,600 gap. Those gaps don't have to fill, but very often they do. And if you're interested in that, kind of look into that. Um, I know other analysts talk about it. I'm not going to get too heavy into that, but it's definitely worth checking out. And it's definitely a, a good indicator to at least keep on your radar when you're playing these markets. So guys, um, I guess from here, I think that's all I have to say about Bitcoin on a long-term and short-term perspective here. So I'm going to hop over to Ethereum now. If we look at Ethereum, guys, you know in my last few videos I pointed out how there was this falling wedge here with this purple line and then we had, well it was a green uh, support box that I had with this double bottom here uh, and I pointed out that there was a bullish divergence on the RSI and everything like that which was leading me to be bullish. Well I did say that if we drop that box that we would probably get quite a move to the downside and we did get a bit of a downside move here. Uh, if we go from our purple line which was actually a horizontal uh, I was looking for a support flip on the daily chart but uh, since we dropped that line you can see that we got a bit of a move down it wasn't anything too crazy it was about 15 percent but in any traditional market 15 percent would be quite devastating so since this is crypto we're kind of used to those sorts of moves 
Um, one thing to look at bullishly here is we once again broke one of our these purple downward sloping lines that I like to map out. The only thing I'm wondering is will we get about a little bit of resistance, especially if we do test back up to this uh, yellow box, which could turn from support to resistance, and then we go down to retest this purple line. That could be pretty devastating and it could go quite a ways and I wouldn't be surprised if that were to land somewhere around here around 230 uh, if I were to zoom out to the daily chart just to kind of show you where these lines come from I'm um, just kind of looking at old lines that I had um, basically this big triangle pattern similar to how I had bitcoins mapped out a little different the chart is a little different but either way, we had this resistance line going down here, so I just extended it through, and I would not be surprised to see us retest that old resistance as new support, much like what I'm looking for with Bitcoin. Just uh, Bitcoin seems a lot closer to that line than uh, Ethereum is. So Ethereum might have a ways to go down yet. Um, that being said, who knows, guys, maybe it'll actually, even if we do dump further, maybe we'll find support of along this white line instead, which would be the upward sloping trend line since the COVID dump over here. Um, but you guys know that I pointed that out with Bitcoin at one point, and I was looking for hopefully getting a bit of a support retest along that line, and that did not happen. We just cut through like butter. So it, will something different happen with Ethereum? Yeah, it's tough to say. But I would not be all that shocked if we just cut through and hit the next white line. Um, of course, this could be quite a ways down the road. These are big patterns playing out and uh, big trend lines. We obviously don't touch them very often. I'm just showing some uh, potential areas that Bitcoin and Ethereum may be headed to. Um, if I zoom right into the 15 minute, something that I am currently watching would be this yellow resistance line. You can see that we have one touch point. Um, this is actually rather close. I might even consider that uh, three. If not, we got a third touch point there. We have quite a few touch points there, guys. It doesn't really look to me like we're about to break it yet, but I'm interested in watching that trend line and who knows, maybe we do go test it again and then get above. I would be interested in playing a bit of a snipe on Ethereum to the upside. Um, if I were to look for some sort of a support line, uh, something like that looks like a pretty solid trend line. Um, I don't like that we did have this fake out here, but quite often with a fake out will come the total reversal. But I would have expected it to blast right through this triangle if that were to be the case and that was actually a bullish fake out. So if we are to drop that line again, I don't see any reason why Ethereum wouldn't dump lower. I don't think I'm going to short Ethereum right now, but uh, just something to watch for guys. But again, getting to the upside of this line, I think uh, there could be some sort of a trade set up there. So. Anyways, guys, that's just a few things I'm looking at on Bitcoin and Ethereum, both long-term and short-term. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, it might have been a little long-winded. i uh, a little tired from work and that sort of stuff. Was kite surfing a ton this weekend, so uh, as much as you guys probably don't want to hear about it, I had a blast doing it. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where I was this weekend and why I didn't make any videos on the long weekend and, and all that sort of stuff. So... Anyways, guys, with that, if you could leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think, what you like about the videos, what you don't like about the videos, things you agree with, what you don't agree with, that sort of stuff. Um, with that, guys, I'm going to leave you to it. Peace out. Stay safe, my friends.